Hey guys, welcome to Ask Larry's Training. Um, episode today is about my inward turn drill, and I've had this question asked a few times, and before I get into everything, you're gonna see my daughter running around, she's hitting off the tee in here, uh, getting after it already at two years old, but I had this uh, question asked online, um, they asked me, what's the purpose of the inward turn drill, and how does this even work, how does this apply to hitting, you know, why does this help? Um, and the question was kind of, I don't know if it was somebody just trying to, you know, you know stick their nose up and you know stick their eyebrow up and go what is this what is the purpose of this drill you know and they, they essentially was like I don't understand how this transfers onto a regular swing path and or a proper swing path you know whatever and again I do these videos uh, for my, my athletes and for people that want to learn about hitting and how I've learned myself and how I've developed myself and how I develop my athletes and so I learned and, and kind of get an idea over the years of you know what works and what doesn't work and what helps at a high level, what helps at a lower level. And everybody's gonna have their different philosophies. Um, and I've talked about this before. Everybody wants you to hit with power, everybody wants you to hit line drives gap to gap. Everybody's gonna have their own way of teaching it, end of the day. And for me, the inward turn, 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 inward turn drill, excuse me, is something that I I started doing. I started uh, you know, you know, moving things around and creating little different uh, ways of how to do it uh, back in 2008 and I was working on how can I hit the slider away because I was struggling with the slider away in college and how can I be more consistent with my swing path and essentially how can I make quicker to the ball uh, from the launch position to the ball because there was a lot of times where I was just missing pitches and there was a lot of times where I would see a slider and I could hit the slider if it was up right but you know, adjusting my back path and how to hit the pitch that slider was working down, that sharp, hard slider. Um, and the inward turn drill is what really helped me with off-speed pitches to another level. Helped me with my first movement. Helped me to stay and really kind of load into the hip and kind of stay on that backside a little bit more. Um, I can't speak enough about how much this drill has helped me as a player, how much is it has helped kids that I've coached over the years. And you know, when it comes to over the years of learning what it does, I really realized how much it helps with the swing path, how much it helps with the first movement of not just the hands, but the hips and the shoulders, you know, making the shoulder working up and not getting out and kind of working, getting away from that push swing. This drill helps with so much. And I have, I have four versions of this drill and I'm only gonna show you a couple of them today. Uh, there's a variation. In the future, when I put up my advanced hitting book, I will have details of every single advanced drill. My first book, How to Build a Ball Player, I put a lot of um, a lot of drills that got me to college, a lot of drills that helped me be more efficient in college, helped me take me to the next level. This next, the next advanced book is gonna be all the drills that I've added on and we've kind of put into the advanced book that I kind of left in out of the first one um, to kind of build my athletes into that next level hitter, which is what we all wanna do. So again, you can fix a lot of flaws and you can fix a lot of back pass and fix a lot of issues in the swing with this drill. I can't stress this enough. So, what I'm gonna start is I'm gonna kinda of give you an idea. I'm gonna start you at a 45 degree angle. So I have a 90 degree angle, I have a 45 degree angle, I have about a 10 degree opening, and then I have my 4.0 inward turn where I kinda of start them in a sprinter position and we kinda of start ourselves um, closed off to the ball. Uh, I'm gonna kinda of give you an idea with the 45 today. So I always set the ball up outside. So whether we're trying to pretend that we're hitting, you know, a low and away off speed pitch, uh, whether it's change up or slider or we're trying to hit a fastball away, you know, doesn't matter. We're just efficient. We're trying to set ourselves up to work it toward the opposite field gap. And I love working opposite field gaps. Even my dead pull hitters, I was, I guess, in a way, a pull hitter. 70% of my balls were probably pull side, but I had the ability to hit the ball off field. And I, at BP, all I did was focus on opposite field because it helped keep my swing true. So when I work with hitters, we focus on opposite field a lot because it's impossible to stay on the ball and stay through the ball. Or sorry, it's, it's impossible to and fit, basically pull off the ball and drive the ball with authority toward that opposite field. You have to stay on the ball, front shoulder stays on, backside works, and you stay through. So basically, you know, stay inside the ball, stay behind the ball, and stay through the ball. Those are the three things we want to do all the time, right? It is impossible to hit the ball with authority to the right center field without doing those things, right? So we focus on that a lot. We focus on the first movement. So a lot of, let's talk about some flaws that, that guys do that, why I do the inward turn drill. So there's a lot of guys that have a tendency of using their front side as their power in their swing. They're not, they don't understand how to load the hip in their, in their load uh, phase in their swing. Um, they don't understand that, you know, 
they get they get in a, get a bat in their hand and they try to use the front side to be powerful. So you see their swings and they're, they're all front side dominant. The hands go. So for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. They're gonna pull their front side to get the barrel through the zone. It happens a lot with young guys that have never been taught. They'll, they'll pull their front side and their hands will work away from their body. Lead arm locks out, which I don't like, and they work this way to kind of get the barrel through, okay? And return drill helps with that, right? Talk about some other guys that are kind of taught this downward swing path and they kind of push the ball. So their body kind of drifts forward and they kind of push the ball, you know, and they see a lot exactly like that, a lot of rollover type swings, you know, just bad swings in general. Um, their hands get away from their body, their barrel drops, you know, the in return drill helps with all these things. It can, it can help you, prevent you from pulling off the ball, it can help you get a feel with the 45 degree angle at launch position, it can help you with that first movement of the back elbow working to the body and the hips working together, getting that back elbow connected with the hip and getting the barrel depth, and that's the most important. One thing I didn't realize when I first started doing this drill, I did this drill to help me with sliders and off-speed pitches. That was the purpose. And I didn't realize how much it was helping me with my bat path and driving through the ball. And it was exponential, the effect it had on my power game in college and the power game with my players. So there's all kinds of flaws that this fixes. You know, bat path, front shoulder on, you name it. So enough rambling about what it fixes, because I do it with every single player. Um, I'm going to show you how we do it. And you've seen some of them. So I'm going to start at a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna show you how we do this and why we do this. So, the 45 degree angle position, and there's a phase for each one. I'm not gonna go over the phases, you know, kind of step one, step two, step three. I'm gonna start at a balanced position. I'm gonna start my feet basically where my launch would be, so it's a wider base. I'm gonna start with kind of like my belly button to my front hip, kind of even with the ball in relation to the ball. And again, I'm working the right side of the field here, okay? Or for our left, you'd be working the left side of the field. So doing this turn, it helps them understand how to load the hip, okay? Helps them to understand that, you know, when you bring the hands back, we want to have a slight turn of the shoulders. We don't want to stay square. We want to turn the shoulders basically wherever the ball goes, the shoulder goes. If it's outside, my shoulder's going to stay on that ball. If it's a curve ball, my shoulder's going to stay on that ball. As soon as my shoulder starts pulling out, I lose plate coverage and my hands are pretty, they're basically along for the right of my shoulder. Again, front side hitters. There's a lot of front side hitters in high school. We don't want that. There's a lot of push all arms hitters in high school. We don't want that stuff. Those two are the biggest flaws that this helps with and we want to get everything connected. We want, the power comes from ground up. We want to use the ground up in our swing. All right, the ground up philosophy in our swing. So I'm here, 45 degree angle. I'm going to turn and I'm going to rotate my feet with me. Again, I have a variation where I don't rotate my feet, I have a variation where I do rotate my feet. But I'm going to rotate my feet in this one, and when I do this, it brings my front heel up off the ground. I shift my weight a little bit more to this, this leg here, but I still keep good balance position with this front leg in this position here. So right now I'm turning, and my knees are working here, and I'm bringing my hands back where my lost position would be. So I can bring my elbow back, so I got my nod to the catcher, 45 degree with a ball. And from this position, is basically a starting position of my swing. So what guys will try to do when they first do this is they'll get into this position, and again, those, especially the front side dominant guys are like, well, this feels uncomfortable. Well, yeah, of course it feels uncomfortable. Anything we do different, it's gonna feel weird, it's gonna feel awkward. So when I get into this position here, right, guy, the front side guys wanna go like this. They wanna open it around, and they use the front side to swing. That was a line drive. If somebody was just watching, go, man, that looked good. Right center field gap. Problem was, the sequence in my swing was off, okay? The front side led the way in the swing. All right, so what I want is I want to feel the back side. So I use the cues. Back shoulder, back hip, back knee, back elbow. Bang, we want to use that in our swing. That's where the power comes from. My dad, when I was boxing back in the day, he would always talk about, you know, it's all from the ground up. Use your butt, use your legs. You got to rotate. That, that is going to be the power in your punch. And it's the same thing with hitting. You know, this rotational sport, we want to use big muscles to get powerful and rotate powerfully in our swing. And so when I get in this position, again, and I'm not trying to think about, oh my God, I'm hitting balls out of the ballpark. You're just thinking about hitting a line drive right here. Efficient movement, line drive in the gap, or line drive over the right fielder's head. Just being quick with the hands, quick with the hips. So here I am right here. I'm lined up, 
my front hip to belly button even with the ball. I'm far enough away where it's an outside pitch, okay? I'm here, I'm going to turn in. I turn from my ankle, knee, hip, shoulder is pointed toward right field, okay? Think about 45 degree angle. I feel the weight on the inside half of my back leg, knee is turned in, I'm in a balanced position even though my chest is over my quad and my right back leg. My hands are back, I'm gonna use this motion here as my swing, as my dictation how to get through on the back side. So I'm here and we're turned. Boom, I'm driving through that back side and I'm hammering that ball. So my chin stays over that shoulder, finishes over this shoulder, and I'm hammering the ball to the right side of the field. So again, this pitch, you know, thigh high. You're gonna hear my baby boy in the background a little bit. Sweetest sound in the world. I'm gonna set it up low and away. So say I'm getting that slider away, that tough pitch away. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna be right here. Boom. Turn, 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 turn. Get that feel under control. Boom. Line drive to the right side of the field. Now again, you can do this draw on soft toss. You can draw off the tee. You can do it on screen toss. I do with all of my, I do this drill a million times in a million different ways, okay? I've been doing this, like I said, 10 years now. It's a field drill, it's a sequence drill, it's, it's a fix, fix or a false drill. I, I can sit here and I can list all kinds of problems and I'll probably list on the YouTube, you know, the, the, the drill, the faults that it, that it fixes, but it's a sequence. I want to get the backside going in my swing. The backside is everything, okay? So, again, I can work on the high ball, all right? So I'm trying to practice on velocity here. So, high pitch, I'm right here. 45 degree angle, I'm gonna turn, turn, turn. I'm gonna feel my scap load. I'm gonna feel that first movement. That one right there felt good. Felt a little bit more of the front side kind of working a little bit there. So again, I'm gonna feel the turn, I'm gonna feel that body work. 45 degree angle, turn, 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 turn. Drive that back side. So essentially, when I do this drill, and when you do this drill, you don't want the front side to lead the way. You don't want your body weight to drift this way. And a lot of guys, some things that they do besides using the front side here. And as a coach, you gotta be aware of where they're going. So when I teach the swing, I teach a slot. So when I, when I first start, my hands and my knob are gonna cut that ball in half. Like if there's a laser pointer on this here, it's gonna cut it in half. It's going in the direction of the ball. I'm not teaching a knob to ball swing here, right? It's just where, the barrel's gonna go where the hands go. Period, right? It's direction, right? I talk about direction a lot in all my swing paths. What gets the barrel on plane is the back elbow. I always tell them what keeps the barrel on plane is the front elbow or the front movement of the forearm, right? Because if the front, if my back elbow gets here and my front elbow stays down, I'm going down with the ball. Back elbow gets here, lead elbow comes up, boom. That keeps my barrel on plane, stays on plane. Sweetheart, stay inside, stay outside. Thank you. But then what consistently keeps me on plane, this is what's most important here, is the direction. So say I get my back elbow, the body and this lead elbow starts working up, but my, my hands or my knob start going this way, I'm hitting off the end of the bat. It's not direction. So back elbow, lead elbow, or lead forearm, you can do the same thing. I talk about shoulders a lot too. And the direction is what keeps you on playing with the ball. Are you gonna get out of here, sweetheart? I don't want you to get hit. If you're gonna come in here, you gotta stay over there. So first movement is everything in this swing. I've gotta have direction. So if you see guys, and their hands work this way, lead arm gets locked out, that's not good direction. They're gonna work around the ball. If my hands start working here, that's not good direction. I'm losing plate coverage, all right? I've gotta be consistent with everything. Sweetie, go sit over there. Scarlett, go sit over there. So now, what I've gotta be efficient with here is direction, backside, front side. Front side works up, shoulder, elbow works up. I always talk about with the pitcher too toward the pitcher. Backside will work down, almost like I'm trying to drive that shoulder down through the ball, okay? Swing path is down to it, up through it. I, if you don't know my swing path philosophy, you can watch the other video on that. I'm not gonna get into that. But again, I'm here, I'm feeling the load on the backside. I'm working through the ball. I felt myself kind of roll over the top of that. Another rep, get my feel for it here. Turn, there it is. That felt really good. So again, and we're a turn drill. It is literally my number one drill, my favorite drill. I'm not gonna go over all the variations, but it gives you an idea 
is a video, this video, I can, I can talk for an hour about this drill. Prevents the guys from being front side dominant, okay? Prevents the guys from being push hitters, helps with their bat path, helps with the consistency and how quick their first movement is, helps with direction, okay? And helps with them essentially hitting the off speed pitch, slider pitch, change up, all that stuff away. So, this is, excuse me, this is the purpose of my inward turn drill for those that have seen it on YouTube and the people that kind of watch. There's a lot of reasons why we do this. I'll go there even more in depth in my upcoming book, but get an idea, hey, when you go over with a coach, there's a purpose with everything he does. There's a purpose behind every single drill. Understand the whys of why you're doing something. The, every person that does this drill with me, they know why. They know the purpose behind it. And, and I explain it to them, and they still don't understand the repercussions of how big this drill can be to help them. Especially when you start throwing timing mechanisms, hard screen toss, and hard soft toss into it. Alright guys, so it's Ask Larry's Training. Like and subscribe. Till next time, see you guys later.